How's it guys? I hope you're all doing well. So, Trigger Warning by William W. Johnstone and J.A. Johnstone. There are no safe spaces indeed. So, I decided to check out this book when I saw a, the Crimson Rogue and Jenny Nicholson review, both of which I highly recommend are incredibly funny. Um, and I decided to go further than that after hearing Jenny Nicholson's story about the author. So I decided to do sort of a deep dive video, and that's what you're seeing here. And that's where I found out that this is indeed a sequel, which is pretty surprising. And in honor of the occasion, I've got my William W. Johnstone t-shirt right here, bought from the website. Quite nice and comfortable, actually. Everything I bought comes from the site. Um, and, well, trigger warning. Hmm. Um, if you don't know what trigger warning is by now, it's not only the thing that is put at the beginning of online articles, and it is not only an excellent book of short stories by Neil Gaiman. It is, in fact, this book by William W. Johnstone and J.A. A. Johnstone. And what I particularly like about the back cover is Johnstone Country, where others fear to trade. Now, this seems to become his sort of tagline that's on all the books. Um, and, you know, it's pretty cheesy, but it's pretty cool as well, because he writes sort of cheesy type books. And this is obviously a dig at the increasing political correctness of the world, according to... Um, certain people who are on the far right, let's say. So the story is that a former army ranger decides to go to school um, to study. I don't really know why. Um, he needs an education, it says on the back. Jake's, his name is Jake Rivers. It's misspelled as Jake's on the back. And it sort of turns into a die hard in a school type scenario. Which, in itself, isn't too bad. With all the school shootings we've had, maybe kind of bad taste. Um, but it's not the premise that's the problem. It's the execution. Let me explain. Uh, the premise here in Trigger Warning I actually quite like. The idea of a emotionally wounded soldier who may have been far right-leaning, going to a very left-leaning school, and having to work together with his classmates to uh, take out a bad guy is actually kind of cool because you can get a bit of character dynamic going there. Because one of the best things to have when you have characters um, is to have conflict between the characters. And if you can have your heroes from such different backgrounds interacting together and perhaps learning to work together and at the end coming through it, better then it's a pretty cool thing to do. Unfortunately, Trigger Warning squanders this in an epic way. The writing is pretty subpar. Um, it's, let's just say it needs another couple of goes over. It seems like an early draft that was used. Um, the characters are very badly fleshed out. Jake Rivers is kind of a racist, um, especially towards Muslims, um, which can, uh, it's just not tasteful, let's say. So you don't really get the feeling that you like Jake very much. Um, and the whole thing is just executed really, really badly. But the interesting thing is that this is supposed to be a sequel. And there's a character in this called Barry Riviera, and he goes by the code name Dog, just Dog. Um, and while both Crimson Rogue and Jenny Nicholson made fun of this, it's supposed to be a little bit of fun for, for William Johnstone fans, because Dog is actually the main character in his popular Rig Warrior series. So now Rig Warrior was written in the 80s 
by John Stone and it's kind of like if Chuck Norris drove a truck. Uh, the basic premise is that Barry Rivers is an ex-Vietnam vet, uh, really good kind of Rambo type, you know, the kind of person that Chuck Norris would have played or Stallone would have played in the 80s um, and if they made a movie of this it could have only been made in the 80s. It's the whole story is he gets called back to check on his father. It looks like the mob is muscling in on his father's trucking business. And his code name is Dog because um, Barry is actually a truck driver. And there's a, there's a thing in Rig Warrior where they make fun of the truck driver's funny call signs and funny names. And it's kind of entertaining. But the most important thing, however, is the fact that Rig Warrior is a friggin' good book. If you're looking for a bit of cheesy, fun 80s action, sleazy cheese where people get their faces blown off and the bad guys are incredibly hateable and the women are all action heroes and the men are all like action heroes and all the heroes want to work together to stop the bad guys kind of thing, this is definitely a book to read. I highly recommend seeking out a copy and picking it up if you're into that sort of thing. And I can see where they were going with Trigger Warning because you can see from John Stone's work that he is more Charlton Heston's out, you can pry the gun out of my cold dead hands than he is asking people for gun control. Um, and I can see what they were doing with Trigger Warning. Uh, they were trying to bring back this and put it in this in the modern day with some twists with the, the political correctness thing and the safe spaces, etc, etc. Um, and they didn't carry it through very well. And the reason is because William W. Johnston, who actually wrote Rig Warrior, died in 2004. Now, if you look online, John Stone was 65 when he died. Um, he died in 2004 and they kept it secret for a large number of years. And it wasn't confirmed until um, a couple of people were on one of his forums and they discovered the death was confirmed there and then they started having something in the back cover here. Um, where it says, following the death of William W. Johnstone, the Johnstone family is working with a carefully selected writer to organize and complete Mr. Johnstone's outlines and many unfinished manuscripts to create additional novels in all of his series. And this novel was inspired by Mr. Johnstone's superb storytelling. And so what I think happened with Trigger Warning is they are using ghostwriters, essentially. And they, so what happens when you're a ghostwriter is you usually get an outline and you will work from the outline that you are given to sort of fill in the gaps to the standard that is expected. So they'll give you an outline, the number of words needed, who the characters are, et cetera, et cetera. And the problem is whoever wrote this, because it sure as heck wasn't William Johnstone and it sure as heck wasn't J.A. Johnstone, Whoever wrote this just wasn't a good writer. In fact, he's an absolutely terrible writer. Or he's a decent, he or she is a decent writer that just, this needed another couple go through with the, the script. But it looks like they just wanted to get it out, um, perhaps to capitalize on current political states. And it's, it's just, it's terrible. Um, and it's sad because Rig Warrior I thoroughly enjoyed and it's just the characters are better drawn um, sure they're a bit caricature but um, they, they're fun Barry Rivers is an engaging hero um, he's fun to listen to he has some good dialogue the woman he's with uh, as they call it on the back, a hard-swearing, hard-driving, tighty-packed blonde named Kate. 
she's a fun character, she's enjoyable to be around, she has a smart mouth, it's just their interactions are a bit more like real people and it's a funny book. It's an action packed book and there's a lot to recommend about this, especially if you like this kind of thing. So it's kind of a shame that they tried to bring back the Rig Warrior series and they ended up screwing it up basically in, uh, in Trigger Warning. And uh, it's, it, I think it's mostly because they tried to go with a premise that needed more uh, nuance than the writer they got could give. Because I also took to reading John Stone's uh, other westerns. Uh, this one is called Death in Texas. Pretty good name. Um, and I've read a couple of the John Stone westerns now. And the thing is, these are the ones published after his death. Uh, the other one is called Riding Shotgun, which is a Red Ryan Western. They're starting a whole bunch of new series. They're putting out friggin' 50 books each year, I think. If you look at the release calendar, they're just book after book after book, sometimes two or three a month. And Trigger Warning was one of the ones that got the least attention. And now Death in Texas, and this goes for the other Western that I read, which was Riding Shotgun. Um, they're reasonably well written and not the best written things in the world. Um, again, the ghostwriters that they've got are kind of subpar, but it works for this kind of thing where you have sort of a pulpy kind of um, dime store novel-esque kind of a scenario and plot and characters. Um, Death in Texas is about this guy called Cullen McCabe who in the beginning of the novel is hunting down the last man who has killed his family and the governor hears of how he hunted down these men, the governor of Texas, and decides to give him a job which is go into towns and sort out trouble that the army can't. Um, so sort of one man army government agents sent in to um, clean up the towns and that. So you get sent to this place called Bonnie Creek which is being taken over by this cattle baron and his cow hands and the plot goes from there about how McCabe uh, tur turns the town, cleans it up really. Um, and it's a fun little book. Um, it's fun to read. It's not the best written as I said, but McCabe's a good hero. He's a strong silent type, but he really sticks to it. It's quite entertaining. Um, and it's more than the basic premise might suggest because they actually flesh out the ranch hands and the bad guy and it's almost like a comedy. And I will be getting more William W. Johnstone um, and J. R. Johnstone Westerns because the, the two of Red are fun. They're enjoyable. Um, there's no political stuff in them, and I realize westerns are just a fantasy. Um, the real Wild West was a lot more, well, the lot more racist, let's say, a lot more, um, a lot worse things happening. And the books, we can just live in that John Wayne era kind of fantasy, uh, that Wild West fantasy kind of thing, and that's what I enjoy with this. So it's not Louis Lamar's Writers in the Purple Sage, but it's a decent enough read. And while I was looking into it, I decided to get another John Stone uh, book, which was his horror book. Um, it's called The Uninvited. So John Stone became known for his westerns and his sort of pulpy um, action stuff like Rig Warrior. But he also dabbled in horror, and since I myself am a horror author, I thought I'd give John Stone's work a try. And this is the first one I've read, um, and it's basically about this chemical that gets sprayed in a parish in Louisiana, and it turns the roaches into giant flesh-eating creatures that go around killing everyone. And it's quite a fun little book, again. Um, reasonably well written. This was when this was John Stone's earlier writing, so it's not as good as Rig Warrior, but you can see there's the beginnings of good writing in him. 
and it's a fun little creature feature kind of like you you would get in the 80s again um, stuff like uh, piranha or, or critters that kind of enjoyable cheesy kind of science fiction horror novel but one thing that struck me most about John Stone's work is how much the man knows what he's talking about. Um, and this comes out in The Uninvited to a degree because the heroes are sheriffs. Uh, the main guys you follow are the small town sheriffs and John Stone was actually uh, a small town sheriff for a while or a sheriff's deputy. Um, he also spent time in the military, so a lot of his characters are ex-military, ex-norm vets, all the star winners, heroes basically, um, heroes from a, a, a dirty, nasty war, as he calls it, and it's it's fun. It's the kind of thing um, that you used to get in the eighties and action movies, and that where you go, oh, the ex Green Beret is the hero is going to save someone. He's the one who has the skills, etc., etc. And the thing with Rig Warrior. Which the fun thing about Rig Warrior is that John Stone knows a lot about truckers, and he said he wants to write the book as a love letter to truckers because he said they don't get enough love. So he ended up writing essentially a modern day western with big rig trucks instead of horses, and it, it's pretty cool. There were there were uh, are really nice details in it actually. Um, the way he talks about the rigs, the way he talks about trucking, um, you really feel grounded in the world that he's created here simply because John Stone is adding all these little bits in. Like he talks about the trucker handles and how ridiculous they are and he talks about driving trucks and the, the, the stuff that truckers face. And yeah, it's a bit of a fantasy, but how many of us can honestly say that we know much about this world? So it's nice to get an eye uh, into it, get a, get an, get a bit of a, a, a peek into a world that not many of us will ever really experience. And it's, it's a fun little book. It's a great little book. And it, again, it makes me sad that um, trigger warning was screwed up so badly because I like Barry Rivers as a character, and he's absolutely butchered in Trigger Warning. He's not as funny, he's, he has none of the views that he had in this, none of the same speech spat patterns or anything. Um, Barry Rivers here is not the same Barry Rivers that you see in Trigger Warning, and that's, that's a real shame because I like Barry Rivers and I want to see him come back. And it's, it's kind of a, a, a shame that Trigger Warning kind of uh, just scuppered everything that makes John Stone's writing so good. Um, and it's, it's to be expected, though, because what I think is a lot of his books now that are being uh, published are really being given to sort of almost inferior writers uh, sometimes and they don't get much um, much work done on them before they're published that's how they can publish so many I will keep reading the westerns I think um, and what I think I'll do is I'll do another video on John Stone and get some more Rig Warrior books and get some books that are closer to trigger warning in how they were written but actually have good reviews um, those books are the doomsday bunker black friday and stand your ground i think it's stand your ground that is basically a right-wing fantasy where um, a small town in texas has all their guns taken away from them and they're attacked by terrorists and if that doesn't sound absolutely hilarious to you, then I don't know what else does. And I doubt it can be as bad as this, but it's entirely possible it will be. So I think I want to continue this dive into Johnstone country um, for 
my entertainment as much as ever, anything else. So if you like this video, give me a like, say what you want to see in the comment section, say whether you want to see me review Doomsday Bunker, Black Friday and Stand Your Ground. The links to Crimson Road's video and Jenny Nicholson's video will be in the description below. Please like, share and subscribe I guess. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I've got a really, really infamous one planned for you next week guys. So look forward to that.